This is the Red Podcast. This is episode number 11. On the previous episode, we talked about how to give a good interview when you've got a product or service that you want to sell. But what happens when you're on the other end of the mic? What happens when you want to get a good interview out of somebody? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about on this episode of the Red Podcast. This is the Red Podcast. Real entrepreneur development. Make more money, work less, and live a life of freedom. No BS advice that really works. Here's your hosts, David Hooper and Laurel Staples. Hey, David. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm great. Good. You I saw me like five minutes ago five when I walked into my ago. office to record this. Nobody else knows that. <laughs> well, yeah, we actually record in, in separate rooms. That's true. You're upstairs, I'm downstairs. Yeah, that's how it works. Well, I was thinking today about the time I first met you. And I remember, this was way before I was doing Go Fire Yourself or any sort of podcasting or anything like that. And I remember you telling me about music business radio and how you would go into the radio studio every week and record these radio shows with famous guests. I'm sure you remember telling me because you're still doing stuff like that. Yep. Still, still doing it. <laughs> still plugging away. And my first thought was like, that is something I would never, ever, ever want to do. Like it sounded terrifying to yeah. me to go into a studio and you have a producer and people in the room, like watching you, listening yeah. to you give the interview and you yeah. have, I mean, can I'm not trying to talk about celebrities here, but can you talk about some of your guests on there? Because these are intimidating guests in my mind. Well, you've had Lisa Presley. Yeah, Lisa Marie Presley was in there a couple days ago. Charlie Daniels was going to come through, and uh, we we're trying to schedule him in. So it's it's people on that level. Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics was one of my favorites. Yeah, so you've just had these huge guests in there, and I just yeah. remember thinking. Like, oh my God, why would he want to do that? Yeah. And now, like, podcasting is one of my favorite things, like, two years or more later. Yeah. And so it just. And you've got me, and we should keep in mind that I'm completely famous. I'm right up True. there with those guys I just mentioned, and, and you're handling it very well. And I've had you on my show, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's interesting how the progression of where you go from, from something sounding absolutely terrifying to it being one of your favorite things. But there's been such a progression of me becoming a better host, like over the last few years. And that's what we want to talk about today. Yeah. How to be a best, the best host. Because a lot of people, like I'm seeing business owners, if you go on iTunes these days, there are just like hundreds of thousands of new podcasts. Or Everybody podcasts. and his brother is starting a podcast these days. Exactly. But just like me, when I first started years ago, is I didn't quite know how to do it. And I went from something that sounded terrifying to kind of dipping my toe in and figuring out how to do it through trial and error. But if you go into a show and you're not a good host, it's not going to do a lot for your business, and it's actually going to waste a lot of time. That's well, there are I plenty find. of people that are not good hosts. There are plenty of people that are doing the same interview all the other not-so-good hosts are doing. I, I did an interview earlier, and I, I was amazed that the guy didn't do any research on me, and the thing was booked like way in advance. Now, now what do you do again? It was like that kind of question. You should nev never, ever ask somebody that, especially on, five you, minutes before the interview. He asked you to be on his show. I mean, he should yeah. know what, you're, what you do. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that's the thing about all these interview shows, that there are so many of them, and which is, it can be a good thing as far as researching guests. But these guys are just looking for something that maybe hasn't been done before or I don't know, but uh, they're, they're not doing the research because they, they just, they, they can't physically do that because they're doing five days a week, seven days a week, oh, yeah. three days a week. And I, David, I read a statistic from Lipson and Lipson is a podcast host and they said that the median for 
podcast downloads was 150. So that means 50% of podcasters right now that are hosted on Libsyn, which is probably a lot of them, have under 150 downloads a show and 50% have over 150 downloads per show. And we all want to be in that upper part. We all want to be over 150 episodes a show, but 50% of people aren't. And a lot of that is because they're not good hosts and they don't yeah. have good content and they don't know how to do that. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that today, how you can stand out of the cesspool of <laughs> the in cesspool. interview, the interview podcast cesspool. Yes. Well, it's so important. I mean, when you're competing with so many different interview shows, you have to stand out. And we and don't let's, all let's have the Let's talk about luxury. how to do that real quick before we kind of get into the, the specifics for, for a host. You know, one thing I think people need to do, Laurel, is don't interview the same people. Oh, yeah. Do a little bit of research. Interview me. No, I'm just kidding. Well, but <laughs> how many of these things do you do a week? I mean, we certainly don't mind. But it's not uncommon for us to be interviewed two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes the same interview. I mean, we have good stories if people want to dig in and get them. But a lot of people are just asking the same stories. We all know how blankety blank quit his job. We all know how Mr. X did this or made a million dollars in one day or whatever. I mean, the stories have been told. Don't ask the same questions and go for the same interviews. That, that's the thing that I, I think would, that if, if you can just ask different questions and find different people, you're ahead of the game. And I think it's okay if you have the same guest as a lot of the other podcasts. If you do what you just said, is asking different questions, put some sort of hook or angle on your interview so that it's not just the same story that every other podcast has and then you get under 150 downloads. Of well, let's show. dive deeper into that because first of all, you've got to research the guest. Absolutely. You can listen to the other interviews that the guest has done, but don't ask any of those same questions. Or if you do ask similar questions, go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And that all you have to do is Google their name. I mean, I interviewed yeah. someone that I had never heard of. It was like a 20-year-old 20, 20 serial entrepreneur. And I was like, I found this guy on Twitter, and I thought he was really cool and had done a, a, a lot of different interesting businesses. And I ended up Googling him, and he had been on you know dozens of these podcasts. And so that's how that helped me kind of do my research on him and figure out what I wanted to ask him. One of the things that like, I've got seven books out, and that's great research right there. And I'm blown away by the number of people who either don't see that I've got books out. They don't do the research. They know me from maybe music, music related stuff, or they haven't read the book. If, even if they do, that's easy research right there. Oh, I read something that you said, and let's talk about this. I'd like to go a little bit deeper. So if somebody's got a book, if they're musicians or if whatever speakers like Ted talks, you know, Look at the content that they're putting out. Read their blog. Don't just ask them five minutes for the interview. Uh, now, what do you do just because you've seen their name everywhere? Now, do you read the full book of somebody before you interview them? What's your thought there? Do you skim it or do you buy it? Well, if I think it's a good book, yeah. I love reading books. But at the same time, you know, not, not always. Now, if it's somebody famous – that I'm dealing with, yeah, I'm more likely to read the whole book because they're those little stories and I want to get into those, those stories and I know the interview is going to go out a little bit more. If it's just average Joe, you know, I'm going to skim through. I'm going to look at some uh, big ideas and we're going to dive deeper into the big ideas. But yeah, I try to read as, as much of the book as I can, not necessarily every single word though. It, it's something worth noting and we didn't do this on our previous episode, which talked about how to be a good interviewee. But this is important. If you've got a book out there, it's good to give people maybe suggested questions or bullet points or topics that you're good on, that you, that you can mm -hmm. speak on. And even if you don't have a book, that, that can also be a good thing too. So a lot of times book authors will have that and that makes it a whole lot easier. But the fact is you've got to know that they've got a book. 
And that's really helpful too if you do read the book and there are certain questions that you want to ask from the book. I, I find it helpful as a host to let my guests know what some of those questions are because I, I feel like it, it helps them prepare a little bit more, which helps the interview go better. So uh, let's talk about a pre-interview then. Is that what you're talking about? Sort of, but I think that's more in, for me, researching the guest and then communicating with them what you want to talk about. So you, do you do a pre-interview? I do a pre-interview with my guest about five minutes before the show. So we hop on the call, we have a little chat, we kind of get relaxed, and I tell them how it's going to work, and then we dive in. But you do it differently, right? Well, on the radio show, here's how I do it. I call the guest up. Usually, I call him a day or two ahead of time. Sometimes it'll be the, the guest publicist if it's like a touring artist or somebody that I'm just not able to get access to as easily. And we will have a discussion. It's not anything in particular. I just want to get to know you. Let's talk about how you started. Tell me, you know, where are you right now? Tell me a little bit about your day. I want to get to know you as a person. And sometimes those stories will come out. I like doing it a few days in advance because if you do it right before, and I do have a a situation that I take them through before just to get them relaxed. We kind of hang out in the office a little bit and and we got I say office, but it's, you know, couches, but the the business office of the radio station just to get them relaxed. But if if they're telling me the story right there, right before we hit record, sometimes these guys forget that we weren't recording that and they think they've already said something to me when they haven't. I like them to kind of walk in with a clean slate, but also have an idea of who I am and kind of where the interview is going. So there are different ways to do it. I I think it's good. I I think the pre-interview is really just part of research, as you said. And I think what you're doing, it sounds like to me, is not so much a pre-interview, but just an opportunity to get them relaxed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come in, if they're doing something like on a podcast via Skype, they're coming in from like another meeting, or their wife's been yelling at them, or the kids are crying, or they just got a million-dollar bill in the mail. It's a, good it's a way. chance to get them relaxed so you can get the best interview possible from them. And, and, and that's what I try to do with uh, the, the, the couch meeting that we have there. Just be like, hey, man, we're just people just like you. We're going to be doing a conversation just like this. The only difference is it's going to be recorded. And I was going to say it's a good way to build rapport and trust with the person to show them that this is going to be okay. You talked about being relaxed and that everything is going to work out. So I think that whether you do the pre-interview chat a couple days before or right before, you have to have that before you just get on the call with them and just dive in to the interview. Okay, what about, like let's say you ask them a question, but you don't get the answer that you want. What do you do in in that situation? Or not not the answer that you want, you just feel like the answer wasn't given at all. (laughs) Sometimes I'll just re-ask the question in kind of a, a different manner, and I edit my podcast. So what I can do is I'll kind of re-ask the question, and then if I need to take out their part in my re-asking of the question, then I can just have the original question and hopefully get to their answer. So I just kind of keep asking until we're really clear because some some guests will just kind of go off on a tangent or do their own thing and you you have to rope them in and bring them back and you can just edit that out if it doesn't pertain to the content that you're talking about in the show i think it's important what you just said is that as the host you are the guy in control and if the if the guy's going off on a, a tangent your guest is going off on a tangent or if you're not getting the answers that you want, or if the guy's going on too long. Have you ever had that happen, Laurel? Oh, my gosh. Well, David, this is something that you taught me going into this, is I did I did my first few interviews with Go Fire Yourself, and when you're a newbie, you're figuring it out. And a couple of the people that I had on there, I asked the first question, and they just, just talked. I mean, for five, 10 minutes or something like that and told their whole story before I could get to the second question. And I told you about this and you said, Laurel, you are the host. You have to take control of your own interview. And that's and not in a mean way or anything, but you you have to be there. You have to be the authority and you have to take it in the direction you want to take it. And so from now on, I keep you like on my shoulder, like telling me that. <laughs> well, I try to have... I call it a story arc. It's not unlike 
watching a television show or reading a book. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and an end. And I walk into every interview kind of knowing what needs to happen. I'm going to start usually with kind of why they're there. We're going to kind of get into the nitty-gritty of it, and then we're going to talk about where they're going, for example. So, yeah, you definitely have to take control of that because some people, for example, when I'm working with an artist, let's say, and I've got a guy that 